the beginning of this week's Torah portion, God tells Moses, Moshe, to command the Jewish people to donate the items that are going to be needed to build the Mikdash, the tabernacle, God's sanctuary. But God uses a strange verb for the command. He tells Moshe to tell the Jews that they should take those items for God. We would have expected God to say that the Jews should give those items for God. Why the strange verb? One commentator explains that by using that phrase, God is teaching us a profound lesson. Your possessions are not yours. You think they are. Your house, your car, your boat, your wardrobe, your baseball card collection, your video game controller, they're not yours. They're with you now on deposit. But when you go at the end of your life, you can't take them with you. Babies are born with those clenched fists because they want to take, grab, and hold everything for their entire lives and never let go. But then when we pass away, we go with open hands because you can't take it with you. There's only one thing, this commentator explains, that you can take with you. The charity that you give during your life. That's yours and it stays with you. We often want to know, what's my return on investment going to be? What am I going to get if I give? Mr. Vanderhoff, that's a very serious thing, not filing an income tax return. Now, suppose I do pay you this. What's the government going to do with it? What are they going to give me? Well, the government gives you everything. It, it protects you. From what? Well, invasion. How do you think the government's going to keep up the Army and Navy with all those battleships? Battleships? <laughs> Last time we used battleships was in the Spanish-American War. And what did we get out of that? Cuba. <laughs> we gave that back. We realize now that we're asking the wrong question. We shouldn't even be using the phraseology of giving money away to charity. We have to change that vernacular. You're not giving anything away. You're taking. You're funding your spiritual 401k, your pension, your defined benefit plan. And it's an evergreen annuity. It pays forever. It pays in this world because you'll feel so good about yourself, seeing or hearing about the joy and the appreciation from the people that you've helped. And then afterwards, after death, in the afterlife, you get the reward, the spiritual reward for the money that you gave while you were down here. That's yours, and unless you regret it, no one can take it away. Marcus Antony, in his famous eulogy of Julius Caesar, said that the evil that men do lives after them. The good is often terred with their bones. Antony is half right. He's right about the evil. It is recorded. It does live after us. When you get up to the proverbial pearly gates, you're called to task for the things that you did wrong while down here. But he's wrong about the good. It's not buried with us. That's also recorded up in heaven, and you're rewarded. But you'll say, I don't have a job yet. Too young, didn't start working. I'm between jobs. I'm looking for work. I'm retired, so I'm not making any money. I can't donate anything to charity. Well, guess what? You've got another commodity, lots of it. You've got time on your hands. And we have an equal obligation to donate time, just like donating money. You have to give 10 to 20% of your income after taxes to charity, and you have to give, or should I say take, 10 to 20% of your time also for charity. I donate my time to prepare and film these videos. And I have it on good authority that up in heaven, there's a hard drive with unlimited capacity. So to quote Shakespeare again, when I shuffle off this mortal coil, hopefully at a very ripe old age, I'm taking these videos with me. Uh -huh.